Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan. Today we are going to be using this as a guinea pig uh, to really just kind of workshop the idea of this question, this dilemma. Are hazmat whiskeys, are they kind of a novelty? Like what's the point in getting a hazmat whiskey if it's so hot and high in proof that you can't taste anything? That's really what I want to talk about today. Now if you're not familiar with the idea of a hazmat whiskey, hazmat bourbon, uh, it's a whiskey that is 140 proof and above. So this one is 144 proof. It comes from a distillery called Broad Branch out in North Carolina. This is a pick that was done, a private barrel selection of their uh, Big Winston is the name of the bourbon, which is traditionally a six-year bourbon that they do. But this is actually seven years and 144 proof, which is friggin' wild, right? Now this whiskey is a low rye mash bill, high corn. So it is traditionally a fairly sweet and nutty is what uh, I'm told, but I have not actually had the big Winston, you know, standard bottle. So I, it would be really, really cool to do like a side-by-side -side comparison of the hazmat version and the standard version. But that's not for today. For today, we're just gonna try this and see if we can even get anything out of it. There's a lot of hazmats out there on shelves these days, sort of like a trend. I see, uh, specifically, I see the uh, mammoth hazmat like everywhere right now. So I'm not sure if they're selling or not, because if they're on every shelf, it almost gives the impression that it's popular. But if it's sitting on every shelf, then it's not being purchased, right? I don't know. But I'm going to pour this, let it open up. Now, one of the first things that is very apparent right off the bat is that this is extremely dark. Look at how dark that whiskey is. That is extremely dark whiskey. That's because it has not been diluted. Lots of contact with oak. Seven years in North Carolina heat. That'll do it. So let's get in on this, start nosing it, see if we can actually pick it. I'm going to shove my snaz in here, just blow my face off. We'll see. So... If I stick my schnoz in here and I just take a deep breath through my mouth and draw some of that air in gently through my nose, the very first thing that I get here is just fresh banana nut bread like coming right out of the oven. Like banana and walnut and that doughy bready note in there too. Wow, that's amazing how like spot on banana nut bread is with this nose. Like <laughs> that's a killer nose actually, super sweet and nutty. But there's also quite a bit of like brown sugary oak in there too and some vanillas. But yeah, that banana nut bread note is it's super prevalent. Well, let's try it. Cheers. Hopefully, well, I'm hoping that that note comes through on the palate because that would make a really nice sip. But let's see. I, I have not had anything yet today either. No, no whiskey at all. So I'm going first sip of the day. It's going to be 144 proof. I'm hoping it doesn't just blow me off my keister right here. But here we go. I mean, there's no way around it. Hot, peppery oak right up front. Just sucker punches you straight to the palate. A big wave of heat that then subsides late in the palate. And then I get cinnamon and brown sugar late in the palate. And that finish is all that banana nuttiness we were getting on the nose. It comes full circle. It's like the framing is that banana nut bread. The nose, the very first thing you get on the whiskey. But then you get that wave of peppery heat. A little bit of brown sugar cinnamon in the end. Again, comes all the way full circle back around to that banana nut bread note we were getting on the nose. There's also, on second sip, as that heat wave right at the front of the palate starts to subside a bit as I'm getting more acclimated to it. On the front end of that sip, I'm starting to get some of these sweet herbal qualities that make me think of like a sweet southern tea. Like a sweet tea you would get at like Lambert's or something. They're chucking friggin' rolls at your head while you're sipping on sweet tea. That's how they do things in the south, by the way. They throw food at you while you're trying to drink your sweet tea. It's also kind of cool. I gotta say, I'm surprised at just how much flavor I'm getting out of this. I expected with 144 proof that it would just be sort of a novelty thing where it's just all about, hey, how much heat can you take? You know, it's just the same thing as like some of those guys. I love hot sauces, right? I love a good hot sauce, I love spicy foods, but there are a lot of hot sauces out there that just go for the full, like, let's just go full spice and there's no good flavor with it. You know, some peppers are really good at, at, at supplementing other things where you're like, here's a pepper that's only spice. It's going to get a ton of spice. Then we're going to also slip some of these habaneros in here so you get that sweet citrusy note as well. And those are the hot sauces that are good that combine the two where it's like, I give you a ton of heat, but I'm also going to supplement it with some great tasting peppers too. Those are the good hot sauces. Then there's the ones that are just like, hey, let's just blow their face off and make it hot, hot, hot with no flavor. Those aren't good, you know? Like, can I take it? Sure. Have I done it on challenge? Yeah. But do I actually put it on my food because I want to? No. 
No, I'd rather have one that's really spicy but also has good flavor. And this, I feel like, delivers the hazmat experience that I wanted, where it brings the heat. Absolutely, unabashedly brings all of that heat. But it is not at the expense of good flavor. It's not trying to mask the fact that it's bad whiskey just by being really high in proof. It's not trying to mask anything. It's bringing some of those sweet, you know, banana nut bread notes, as well as that herbal and sweet quality up front that made me think of the sweet tea. I think this is actually a pretty yummy sip, all things considered. Color me impressed. What a peculiar sip. Yeah, I'm not mad about that at all. So, should you ever buy a hazmat whiskey? Well, I think the answer is, it depends. I think it depends on the distillery, it depends on the quality of the sip, and if they can bring those flavors forward. I think that uh, Broad Branch did a good job with this one, because it definitely brought the spice, but it wasn't lacking in flavor. I think that is what you want out of a hazmat. If it can deliver on both fronts, absolutely, it would probably be worth your cash for a pour or for a bottle. But I would also caution you to look up reviews before you buy a hazmat bottle. Make sure you vet it because I would hate for you to spend a lot of money on something that, you know, they have to charge a premium for a hazmat whiskey because they weren't able to add water to it to dilute it down so that they can make, you know, this much whiskey go this wide. Now, with this much whiskey not being diluted, they didn't water it down. Now they can only fill a fewer amount of bottles with that batch. So obviously they got to charge more money for it so that they can get their money's worth out of the juice. So I don't recommend that you you pay the premium for a hazmat unless you do your research and make sure that it's something that either you are willing to take a risk on it because you're familiar with the distillery or you've done your research to see what the um, what other people who've had that hazmat bottle have to say about it first. But this one, pretty good. I actually kind of like that. Thanks so much, Matt, for sharing that with me. I appreciate it, man. Uh, I've never had anything from Broad Branch. In fact, looking at their website, it looks like they only really have the two whiskeys. They've got the Rye Fidelity, which is their rye. They've got the Big Winston, which is the bourbon that we just tried the hazmat version of. Other than that, it looks like it's a lot of other spirits like their classic Carolina spirit, which is a clear liquid they say is sort of a substitute for tequila. Oh, they actually have a wine barrel finished uh, bourbon as well. Interesting. Then they've got some flavored whiskeys like uh, North Carolina blueberry flavored whiskeys, triple distilled Caribbean molasses rum. So it's not sugar cane, it's molasses distilled. Interesting. Well, maybe sometime I got to give them a shot and check them out because um, this uh, this hazmat whiskey was not bad at all. Not bad at all. Hey, if you've ever had a hazmat whiskey, let me know in the comment section whose you tried and what you thought of that bottle yourself. I'd be interested to hear sort of wh which ones rise to the top. Which are some of the more, the more prominent hazmats out there that are worth checking for? Let me know down below. Big shout out to my Patreon community who support me and fund the bottles we get to pick up and review here on the channel. I really appreciate you guys. I couldn't do the channel without you. Make sure you check the link in the description for a link to our Discord. We'd love to get to know you. Hop on in there, introduce yourself, and get involved in the conversations. Really looking forward to Wednesday uh, this week because that's the last night of our Patreon bottle share. So if you're one of the Patreon members and you got the samples that we sent out, looking forward to sitting down with you guys virtually on Discord and uh, going through the, the last uh, whiskeys together and uh, sharing our thoughts and opinions on it. Cheers, my friends. May you live richly and get better with age, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.